there was some blips of greatness that will be implemented upon. Some trades were made. And is this going to be the year that a team that is in the third largest city in America breaks through back to prominence under this man's leadership? Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of the Chicago Bears. Right on. Coach Eberflus. Yeah, coach. Coach, how you doing? How are we doing, fellas? You doing good? Yeah, you're in Indianapolis. You look great. Loving the city. Great to have you back in here, pal. We can feel your presence. We can feel your aura. You loving it here? Yeah, it's uh, it's good to be back. Uh, you know, we had obviously joint practices the last couple of days, and uh, those are really good. You know, I always look for the one-on-one -on -one matchups, and uh, it, it was really good to uh, to, to evaluate those, and uh, certainly for our veterans and our young guys too. Okay, so we're kind of – we were just on the tail end of the conversation there. I don't know how much you heard, but it feels like there's much more old-school mentality about football again. There was a couple years there where it was leaving. I don't know if you got a sense of that because you're probably in your own world, but it felt like there was a lot more data analytics. We're doing a lot of walkthroughs. We're not really hitting. We're going to give a little bit of a break. New CBA, everything's getting soft. And then now it feels like, hey – it feels like coaches are allowed to be tough again. And we talked to Shaq Leonard whenever you were the defensive coordinator. Uh, and he said, if you're going to come to the Colts, you're going to have to fucking work pretty much. Like, you got to come in. Mm -hmm. We work here. Coach Eberflus has us flying to the ball working. Whenever you became a head coach now and you're running the camp, was there any hesitancies of, like, how you treat training camp, how you treat your players? Or is it one speed all the time for you and you just got to find the guys that fit it? Yeah, it's a combination of that. I would say that, you know, we have standards of how we operate and how we go about our business in terms of practice. And we standardize, you know, the the, the effort in which guys play, uh, the intensity in which they play, and those are all measured, you know, so we can clearly show the guys on tape um, exactly what we're looking for in practice and in the games. You know, so I'll give you an example. So for a defensive player, we want to uh, make sure that they're running to the football. And if there's a change of speed when you run to the football, that's considered a loaf uh, in our system. Um, also, if you're like, an offensive lineman, we want you to cover down the field, you know, and in practice, those guys are covering down the field 15 yards um, after every single play. So we're working the conditioning level of our players during practice, but also teaching them how to finish and how to be physical um, you know, and what we standardize uh, for each individual player. So they, it's clear cut for each guy. So that's one of the things that we've done over the course of the years to, uh, to really get that style uh, that we want to see on game day. Well, we were lucky to see your defense here in Indianapolis. Uh, and everything that was coming out of it was like, hey, we are a spitting image of our defensive coordinator. This is the expectation. This is how we play. And you created all pros all over yeah. that defense. So whenever you get the head coaching job, and what you just said there, you would think would be just very normal. Like, yeah, we run to the ball. We don't <laughs> slow down. Mm -hmm. We do that. But that kind of change, right? Was there a moment where you get up to Chicago Go, and you start thinking to yourself, like, okay, we're going to have to change. We're going to have to find our people. You know, like, was there a moment of that last year? And do you feel you've gotten to the point where it's like your locker room is has a lot more of your flavor in it as opposed to the transition phase that is always going to be difficult with a head coaching change? Yeah, I think when you're always doing the transition phase, even when we first got to uh, Indianapolis, uh, you know, and then when we first got to Chicago, there's always that transition phase where, you know, you get guys that buy in right away to this to that type of style, um, you know, and it's natural for them to do that. You know, they've been that way all, all along, but those guys that have to, it takes some time, you have to show them why. And really the reason why we do it, it's about winning. You know, it's about, you know, taking care of the football, taking the ball away and playing with great effort. And, you know, that's the buy-in to it. And, you know, Ryan Poles and I, uh, you know, as we selected these players, uh, you know, the last two draft classes, which is 21 guys, and then obviously the huge class that we had in free agency this year, it's really about selecting the guys that love football and want to play that style. And uh, you can see it on tape. So th their margin for getting to where we need them to get to is not that far. And we're never going to take a guy who doesn't love football and show it on tape. Feels like it's becoming more prominent now, again, finally, mm -hmm. where it's like, hey, does this guy love ball or not? Yeah, he does. Cool. We want him in our building. There for a bit, it was like, we can teach him to love football for a while. Like analytics and stats were kind of becoming much more prevalent than like who the human is. And I think any of us that have ever been in the NFL, it's like, you need people in that locker room 
that are all going in the same direction. You get a couple of those guys going the other way, it ruins everything almost quickly. That's why they say this guy's locker room cancer because it spreads. Let's talk about who your leader is. Justin Fields feels like a guy, right? I mean, this feels oh, yeah. this feels like oh, a yeah. guy. Everything he's eating fish now, which I'm a big yep, fan of. Big. Love that he's getting Amen. some fish oils in there. Not that I'm a dietitian or anything, <laughs> but like he was one of the big time upsides last year. Whenever I would watch for the dumb eye, he'd be wide open, sprinting down the field, somehow faster than everybody. They say he got to work on his arm. What have you seen from Justin Fields this year that gives you hope that maybe we don't have the first pick in the draft like we did this past season? And how do you feel about the team as a whole following Justin Fields as his leadership? Yeah, first and foremost, you know, Justin is that. He loves football. Um, and he, he's the hardest worker. Um, he's the first guy in. He's the last guy to leave. And that's what you want from your quarterback, you know, and, and he's tough. Hell you yeah. know, and how, how does a quarterback exhibit toughness? Well, he'll stand in the pocket, you know, and, and you know, he'll move around. And, you know, we all saw the dynamic runs that he has, but you know, he's got those uh, those special qualities, the it factor that you that you're looking for in a quarterback. And and we're certainly excited about his progress, too. You know, he's worked his uh, his tail off here in the offseason, you know, uh, working on the, you know, his, uh, you know, the mechanics, the delivery, the, the you know, the, the, the progressions, everything, his footwork, his platform, you know, from A to Z, he's worked on that and he and he's progressing, um, you know, right on track for us. And we're excited to see where he goes. I uh, had a good week of practice here, and we're excited about where it's going here uh, leading up to the first game. Hey, got him a big-time weapon, too, this past yeah. offseason. Their relationship seems to be beautiful. I've seen them do interviews together, and it's like they're brothers as if. It's like the chemistry was immediate. Are you seeing the same thing with DJ's addition to the team? Yeah, no doubt. You can see that. And the chemistry, really, with uh, with all the skill, you know, we do have a, a good set of tight ends now. You know, we got a good you know, receiving core. And, uh, you know, a good set of backs that can catch the ball out of the backfield. So we got a good compliment, you know, to Justin uh, and putting a skill around him. And, and our scouting staff has done a great job with that. And we're excited to see where that goes. And the chemistry with him and DJ is certainly uh, was was the immediate. And you can feel that. You can see that in the practices here in, in, in Indiana. So. Um, it's, it's continuing to develop, and we're like where it's going. Uh, Coach, and the boys have some questions, and we can't thank you enough for taking time out of your day here to chat with us. Big fan from afar of the way you operate because of how all the players talk about you. You know what I mean? Like, I think that is the biggest thing for anybody. Like, how's this guy's teammates talk about him? And if he's a coach, how's this guy's players talk about him? That's how I judge everybody. Everybody that has ever talked about you that played for you loves you. So you need to know that, but also – you talked earlier about how you have to instill how these guys need to practice, how they need to go about doing what they do. And on those two touchdowns that Justin Fields throw, obviously the internet's going to do what the internet does. Oh, way to go, Justin Fields. You threw a screen <laughs> and, a, and a little check down to the out okay. where it was touchdowns. Look at these offensive linemen, though. Like, everybody seems yeah. to just blow by the highlights of this thing. You have offensive linemen 40 yards down the field blocking. I would assume that's because of what your practice habits are, but you got to be very inspired by what you're seeing from the big dudes up front on all of these plays coach yes you know and, and we really highlight that you know that's our style right there and you can see that like, like right here in the screen pass you can see right there that you know uh, braxton jones number 70 gets a block um, uh, number 11 mooney had a great block there um, and a lot of the linemen down the field uh, tevis gibson right there or i'm sorry uh, uh jenkins that had a great job, a great block. So there's a lot of great blocks in that moment right there. And that's our style. And, and the guys do a great job with that, you know, and really, uh, you know, to go back with the, with the comments you talk, talked about that, you know, with the players that I coach is that, you know, uh, I think so highly of those guys. And I, and I always thank them for, for the effort that they put in because our style is not for everybody and the guys that can get it done and do it the right way. They become all pros because of the effort and the, and the attention to detail that they put in and as they work as professional athletes. And those guys that buy into the system, man, they take off, and, but it's not easy. And those guys have that, that inside toughness uh, that it takes. And, and I commend all those guys, you know, all the guys that I've, always, that I've coached in the past, and I thank them, you know, because it's not easy. And, and it's a hard standard to uphold. And, uh, man, I'm proud of those guys for what, they, what they're what able to accomplish. Yeah, well, hey, we're proud of you too, Bob. Because mm -hmm. it's not an easy thing to be a hard-nosed coach in these days. 
you know? Because you got a lot of people that would very easily say, nah, I'm not doing this. To hell with this guy, I'm going elsewhere. You saying those who buy in will be champions, pretty much. Sweet. Do you feel like you've got that with this team now? And also, my wife and I, because of how close Chicago is, like we take trips up there, and I think I've learned a lot more about Chicago. Hey, that's a blue collar city. Like, you know, you go oh, to yeah. New York, a lot of suits. And I'm not saying there isn't suits in Chicago, but it's a lot more of a blue collar, big city. That hard nosed right. style, I think, will be beloved there. What are your thoughts on thinking about the city matching with the team? And do you feel like it's a perfect fit? We just need to get the results now. Yeah, I, I really I, – that's so true that this is a, a city that loves the Bears and loves football, and they're, and they're an educated bunch too. Now, these fans know football. They know what it looks oh, like, yeah. and, and well, they appreciate the, the right kind of style. You know, so they appreciate the hustle, the effort, you know, the ability to run the ball. You know, we obviously we ran the ball very well last year, and that's, that's always been the Chicago Bear way. You know, and then uh, implementing the toughness uh, that, that it takes to play, you know, in the elements and being able to do that. So, uh, you know, we fell in love with the city and really for me, it's, it's a perfect fit, you know? So, you know, I had an opportunity maybe to, you know, to uh, look at some other places and man, this was the place for me. Um, and it was such a natural fit for, for me and, and the style that we want to, uh, you know, bring here to Chicago. I can't wait to watch your team continue to grow and mature under your leadership. I heard Anthony Richardson just went 20 for 20, 20 touchdowns against you guys, though. Uh -oh. That's what I heard, Coach. That's why I don't know if you were yelling at people, but I heard uh, – I don't I, know about that. Ah, I know. I was I was reading oh. mixed reports. You know, the Colts social media team told me we won. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I read a bunch of uh, other people that are maybe a little – Independent and sure. non-biased. Oh, okay. like, hey, Chicago Bears team looks real good right now. <laughs> so uh, I know it's all a development, but we are very happy to see you back in the city. And thank you for doing the joint practices with our boys, man. Because I think that's a big sacrifice, isn't it? I think like giving up a week alone to practice with another team, that's not like the easiest decision to make, right? Is it for a head coach? Well, I think it's you can get a lot from it. You know, you're learning a lot. So for me, you know, to take your 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 show on the road, I think is very important uh, that you understand how to do that. You know, and and uh, you know our logistics team did a great job from you know uh, getting ourselves all set up here, and then really about our players' mindset. You know, to be able to go on the road and perform. You know, we talk about that all the time. Hey, you're performing at home. You're performing on the road. It's all the same. It's about your routine and the preparation that you put in. And I think it's it's important for us. I, and I love the fact that we played um, and we practiced at night and we're playing at night because that gives us an opportunity to work on our night games. You know, we have two Thursday games this year. We have a, a Monday night game. You know, we got you know we got a Sunday night game. So it's important for us to be able to work Damn. through that once we get to 48 oh, yeah. hour prep. So I think it's really good for us. And I thought the guys handled it really well. Four primetime games, Coach, in your second year. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, I think we ought to do this. We got to give a shout out to, to Zito Perez, your producer. You oh, know, let's go. Guy. There he is right there. Let's you go, see, look at him. He came in here rocking this dick uh, cutoff sweater mm -hmm. thing. Hasn't showered he's in a few fabulous. days. Just getting after <laughs> it. Yeah. You know, he's the guy. He's he's obviously the reason you're on the show, so we're very thankful. But he's been holding it down for the Bears literally since day one. Oh, but yeah. I think that's, to your point, all of Chicago, like, is yearning for the Bears to be, you know, back. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate oh, and we are. Okay. There that's every year, though, Boom. Coach. Yep. I, I want to yep. let you know that is every year. And if you were to take the Bears back to true prominence, God, that city of Chicago would be obnoxiously loud. Oh, my God. It would be awesome. Absurd. It would be great. And Zito would be sweating all over every microphone, screaming about the Bears to Bear Don. Appreciate that. Uh, Connor has some questions for you, Coach. Yeah, Coach, you just kind of explained how with some players, like you want them to go through that game day routine, like the night game coming up. You want them to experience that, especially with the prime times. But how do you decide, you know, who and how long some of these guys are going to play? Because, I mean, a lot of times with the joint practices we saw last night, no real starters play. But, I mean, the first game you had, you know, Justin and the O-line and DJ and a lot of your guys out there, how do you go through that process? And does it depend on practice? Like, if someone sucks in practice, are you going to say, like, hey, we're going to need to see you play and strap up on uh, Saturday because we need to see more reps out of you? Yeah, that's a great question, and it's really individualized. Um, you know, certainly with your quarterback, you're never going to put him out there with uh, anybody but the first line. I mean, you know, so that's always the case that you want to do that, and you want to put the skill set around him. 
Uh, so, you, you know, most coaches would pair that together. Um, but pretty much after that, it's going to be individualized with, with the player. You know, you know, what's his, his experience? You know, has he played a lot of football? Um, you know, those types of things. And, and you do look at the rookies. You know, we want, get, want to get rookies a lot of play time um, as much as we can in the preseason. Um, if they're going to be playing for you uh, in your rotation or, or be a starter. And uh, you certainly look at that, too. And, you know, we're never afraid to play the rookies. Obviously, we had the most rookie snaps in the league by a thousand last year. So and that's going to pay dividends for us this year. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, it's always individualized for that. Season's over and your PR guy or something comes up and say, a couple things we did this year. OK, yeah, we had the most rookie snaps by a thousand. Last year. Cool. And you're like, it felt like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I knew I knew it was high. I didn't know it was that much. Yeah, and that's good news, though, right? That's great news, right? Kind of getting in the deep end, baptized almost, and then now the experiences are just priceless almost, I think, going into this next year. Yeah, I just think that, you know, really, and, and you know this, you being in pro football, that you see the biggest jump from year one to year two. You know, you know that first year is, is certainly hard for the rookie times. Uh, there's a lot of learning experience that you, that you go through um, as a rookie. And then once you get your feet, you know, settled, I think that the biggest jump was always in that second year, you know, uh, for, for most players. And uh, how about you? I've seen, yeah, I think it, I think it's true for everybody. There's there's no teacher like experience. You know, when you when you have experience in a job, you know, you know, just, you know, think about your first year doing your show or yeah. or your first year, you know, making a big jump in a, in a change that you're doing, um, you know, be being a, a defensive coordinator for the first year. Um, you know, back when I was at Missouri, you know, or, or when I was when I even jumped to the pros is always a I think there's a big jump in that second year um, just because of the experience factor. They say whenever you get that head coaching role, it's like drinking out of a fire hose. Did you experience that at all? I know you're a veteran coach by the time you got the head coaching job. But like, was it everything that it's kind of cracked up to be about all the administrative bullshit almost that comes into your world immediately you become a head coach? Did you welcome it, hate it? And is second year a lot easier for you on that part? Yeah, you know, I welcomed it. You know, I, I have a lot of uh, mentors that I, I talked to before, you know, and, and during the process of, of getting interviews for head coaching jobs and then finally getting the head coaching job. So I was, you know, I was ready for a lot of it. Um, but you do spend a lot of time, a lot of time not on football. And that's just part of the job. And you got to really do a good job of segmenting that. And you got to keep the main thing, the main thing, which is football. And you got to make sure that you uh, really do a good job organizing your time. But, uh, it's all part of the job. Hey, but you got to be where your feet are too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you really do. You know, you got to make sure you're not. Uh, you know, that's that's always been the, the thing. And I, you know, I've stayed long stints at places. You know, uh, you know, seven years. You know, at the Cowboys, eight years at Missouri. You know, uh, four years at Indianapolis. So, I'm a big believer in being where your feet are and really helping uh, the people and serving the people that you're working with. And, uh, and just trying to make them the best you can be. Yeah, and if you take care of the little things, the big things will take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> How many you got? You got a, are, you a, are you, obviously, you're a, a football coach. So you have all yeah. of these, because cliches are cliche for a reason. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of media people, when a coach gives, like, a cliche answer, like, back to the cliches, it's like, well, the reason why they're cliches is because they're true. Is are you? Do you have a motto for the team? Do you rely on any words whenever, like you're speaking to the squad? What is your style whenever you're addressing a room full of professional athletes? Yeah, you know, it's always about you know your your behavior and your work patterns. To me, you know, it's like yes, you, know, you can say, you can say a lot of things, and that those those are important because I think you need to say it first before you you actually you know you get to, need to see it. You need to see it first in your in your eye, your vision, where you're going to go. Then I think you got to say it to yourself. But the most important part is the doing of it. You know, the execution piece and actually the doing of it. So, you know, what we have is all we have is on, on the practice field, and th those guys know what that our work patterns are the most important things. How you prepare and how you play in practice is how you're going to play in the games, and and we just keep it that simple. Coach, you got anybody showing up late to meetings or anything like that? Treatment. What's that again? You got any guys showing up late to meetings or treatment or anything like that in your building? No, I mean not not very often, um, you know, because I don't I don't play with that. So it's like uh, you know we uh, <laughs> we are you know we just have a fine schedule, and the guys know that if if they're late, they're going to get a fine. And uh, and I tell them, hey, if I'm late to something, I'm going to fine myself. So it's everybody's held to the same standard. I think like the winning teams 
somehow all those little things that potentially happen in other places don't happen, yeah. you know? And if you see some of those things happening, it's almost like an indicator, like, oh, we're not, we are not all in here, you know what I mean? And it's like, once that starts happening, it's hard to stop, too. I appreciate your answer there. I don't play with that shit. That's, <laughs> I, I, because yeah, that's smart. Like, that's like professional football. You don't have to be here. You get to be here. Show up on time and respect everybody. It's like, that's not happening everywhere, though, coach. You know that. There's some real toxic shit going on in 2023 in the NFL, in professional football, that I, I, I get told stories and I'm just like, what is happening in the NFL? These people don't think they can get cut. I don't think, coach. Well, I just think it's, you know, it's, I think it's, it's easier that way because everybody's held to the same standard. There's no, there's no gray. It's just the way it is. And, and uh, I think people appreciate that, you know, cause you know, yeah. when you look at a football team, there's, there's, you know, most teams are 90% of the guys are doing it the right way. And, and uh, you know, and they, and they're on time and they're working hard and they're, you know, they love the profession. And, and then there's, you know, if you let the other, you know, four or five guys, you know, muck up the whole other group, you know, that's not right. You know, so, so to me, it's like, you know, everybody's going to help be held to the same standard and it makes it easier for the coaches, makes it easier for the players. And now they can just focus on their job. They're not worried about that other, the other issues, you know, let the head coach handle that and then, and then just work from there. Yeah, let me go ahead and take money out of this guy's pocket, all right? And you guys don't. You guys keep all your money. Let's keep going. Coach, this is my first time really hearing you speak uh, for a long period of time, and obviously the first time we've gotten a chat. I'm incredibly impressed. Uh, I'm excited to yeah. see what your team does, especially with you. the opportunity that is kind of sitting on the horizon. Go ahead, Ty Schmidt, owner of the Green Bay Packers, Ty Schmidt. Yeah, Coach, obviously at this point in the preseason, you can't do you – know, like you can't be worrying about other teams in the division. you got so much stuff going on – you know, with the Bears, and and you weren't there for the bulk of his career, but is there like a message or a feeling um, in or, and around the team now that Aaron Rodgers isn't a part of the Packers anymore? Like, hey, the division's wide open, and not just Aaron. You know, Dalvin Cook isn't with the Vikings anymore. Like, it really does seem for the first time in a long time that the NFC North kind of is up for the grab or up for grabs. Yeah, you know, to me, that's like the the uh, you know kind of the outside. Uh, noise that's going on and 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 certainly we're aware of that you know there you know it's you know it's, it's out there for everybody to see but <laughs> and we certainly respect Aaron Rodgers better that he is uh but we are really focused on our on ourselves as as we always do um as you have to do as a football team we, you know we love our acquisitions we love all those things that we that we are building here and uh it's it's all about for for us is just about hey focusing on what we're doing and how we're doing it you know, we're second year in our systems. So I think that's pretty cool. We can start building upon that. We got a new skill set on, you know, a new front seven, a new skill set on offense that we're going to be able to enhance those guys' skills and put those guys in position to make plays. And that's really our, where our main focus is. Uh, you know, we certainly heard that he's no longer in the – NFC North, and we, yeah, yeah, we have heard that. Yeah, that's good news. We are, we are happy he is out of here, but that ain't for us to worry about. Every year we're trying to win a Super Bowl. I'm excited to see what the Bears do. I'm very pumped mm -hmm. up after chit chatting with you, Eberflus. We're going to see probably a shirtless Zito throughout the season, <laughs> oh, a yeah. lot more than we have in the past. Oh. Speaking of new acquisitions, Tone Diggs has the last question for you here. Yeah, Coach, you talked about the new acquisitions and the new skill set uh, in the in the front seven. You brought in two stud middle linebackers, and then. Recently, right before camp, you brought in Unique Ngakwe for, I think, on a one-year, ten million deal, ten million dollar deal to to get after the after the quarterback. It, were those places that you just you thought in your scheme and your defense that would fit best? And 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 then Unique is just were you like just like oh, there's this incredible pass rusher still out on the market. Dog. Yeah, yeah. So you know, if you look back at the history of our defense, you know, it goes back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, with Coach Dungy, and then obviously Lovey Smith here, and then you know. Uh, Rod Marinelli is one of my mentors and, and, you know, we had it in Dallas and then, you know, bringing it over here to uh, Chicago again. And, uh, you know, the, the positions that you're talking about, you know, the, the linebackers obviously are a big part of that, you know, the history of that, the hall of famers that have played those positions. And we're certainly excited about, you know, um, uh, Edmonds and, you know, and uh, Edwards for sure inside. They're both instinctual players, long players and, uh, you know, Getting uh, Ngakwe on the outside, Yannick, you know, it's 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 important to have obviously have that edge rush, um, but we're also excited about the inside pieces, you know, the the D tackles that we have, the ones that, the ones we just signed, and like I said before, the the back end uh, is all young guys. Those are the guys that I was talking about earlier. They've they've played, 
you know, we got Eddie Jackson, of course, but the rest of those guys are, are young, and we're certainly excited about those guys uh, going forward. Well, good luck to everybody. Uh, I believe the internet has told us, and it's probably through a report from you, that Justin Fields will not be playing against the Indianapolis Colts this weekend. Is that because the joint practices probably don't have to see a lot of the guys? You've already got a lot of looks at that whole thing? Yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. You really get, like, uh, you know, two, almost two preseason games, you know, uh, with the practices that you get. And uh, we're, we're, we're good with where he is right now. And, again, we'll evaluate if he's going to play in that last game. But, uh, you know, we do like to get him some more reps, uh, you know, here going forward uh, uh, as we go. Did you guys win your first preseason game? Uh, yes. Yep. Well, we did. We did. Yeah, we did it, Coach. Ooh. So, I didn't know. <laughs> Maybe you guys just want to let us get one. Yeah. You know what I mean, because we're going to be there. On. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It'll be fun. Be if in the, it'll be fun if we, we didn't get a lot of those last year. No, none, really. No. None. We didn't get a lot of like good moments last year. Nope. <laughs> during the season. So if you want to throw us a bone, you know, old home of yours, please do what you got to do. Can't wait to watch your team. And thank you so much for the time. This has been a true joy. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. Hey, good luck out there, ladies and gentlemen. Coach Matt Eberflew. Yeah, go. Cool.